A very good evening to all. May I please request all present to kindly rise for the national anthem. Shri Jagdeep Dhankar, Honorable Vice President of India, Dr. Karan Singh, author and distinguished parliamentarian, Shri Sunil Gupta, Secretary to the Vice President of India, and all dignitaries and guests present here this evening. It is my privilege to welcome you to this event, the release of Dr. Karan Singh's book, Mundaka Upanishad, The Bridge to Immortality, by the Honorable Vice President of India, Shri Jagdeep Dhankar. Swami Vivekananda once said, the Upanishads are the great mine of strength. Therein lies strength enough to invigorate the whole world. Freedom, physical freedom, mental freedom, and spiritual freedom are the watchwords of the Upanishads. The Upanishads were composed several millennia ago, but they present a philosophy of life and human existence that is remarkably relevant to this day. As we mark 75 years of freedom, of independence. It is an apt opportunity to reconnect with the rich corpus of philosophical thought and spiritual experience that the Upanishads represent. I now request Sri Vikramaditya Singh, trustee J.K. Dharmarth Trust, to deliver the welcome address. Honorable Vice President of India, Shri Jagdeep Dhankar Ji, Maharaja Dr. Karan Singh Ji, Trustees of the Jammu and Kashmir Dharma Trust, and friends, Namaskar to all of you. As you know, we are gathered here today for the release of the translation and commentary on the Mundaka Upanishad. These priceless age-old manuscripts form part of a collection of the Ranveer Sanskrit Institute at Jammu. On behalf of the Jammu and Kashmir Dharma Trust, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. This book has been brought to you by the Trust and was made possible by the tireless efforts of Maharaja Saab and Pandit Kamal Kishore Sharma. It is published by Motilal Banarsi Das. The Trust was formed in 1846 by the founder of the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, Maharaja Gulab Singh Ji. The main objective of the trust was to safeguard our ancient Hindu shrines, 
temples, manuscripts, and in general, Sanatan Dharma. Despite operating in challenging environments, our trust continues to fulfill these objectives to the best of our efforts. Once again, I welcome you all on this occasion. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Honorable Vice President for being kind enough to host this event at his residence. Namaskar. The Hindi translation of Dr. Karan Singh's text, as well as the transliteration of the Sanskrit text, has been done by Sri Kamal Kishore Mishra. I now invite Sri Kamal Kishore Mishra to introduce the book. Uprashtrapati Mahadeh Ji, Param Sraddhe Gurudev, Padm Bibhushan, Dr. Karn Singh Ji, Tatha Dogra Rajvans Ke Mananiye Parijan, Sammaniye Deviyo Aur Sajjano. Baudhik Bhagalik Drishti Se Virat Jammu Aur Kashmir, Adi Shankrachare, Abhinav Gupta, Kalhan, Jaisse Manishyo Ki Gyan Aur Karm Bhoomi Rahi Hai. ब्रह्मांड के दिव्य नर्तन भगवान शंकर तथा डोगरा राजवंश के कुल देवता श्री रघुनाथ जी के आशीर्वाद से महाराजा रणवीर सिंह जी ने 19वीं शताब्दी के उत्तरार्ध में जिस महती कार्य को प्रारंभ किए थे वो विश्व की ज्ञान परंपरा में भारतीय अवदान को प्रशस्त करते हैं महाराजा रणवीर सिंह जी के समय उनके राज्यकाल में रूडोल्फ रॉथ ब्यूलर ऑरियल स्टाइन जैसे प्रसिद्ध इंडोलॉजिस्ट पैलियोग्राफिस्ट एपिग्राफिस्ट ने राज्य में भ्रमण कर स्थानीय विद्वानों से परिचर्चा करते रहे दुर्लभ पांडुलिपियों को संग्रह करवाना महाराजा साहब की अभिरुचि और दूरदृष्टि को परिचय कराती है अंततः इसका बहुत विशाल और अद्भुत संग्रह तैयार हो गया और समय के साथ इसमें वृद्धि होती चली गई भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा में मत अभिमत खंडन मंडन सिद्धि और संवाद की परंपरा का महत्वपूर्ण स्थान है इन पांडुलिपियों में मूल संस्कृत पर वृत्ति वार्तिक भाष्य टीका दीपिका प्रदीपिका इत्यादि लिखने की अत्यंत समृद्ध बौद्धिक परंपरा रही है इस संस्थान को रणबीर संस्कृत रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट के नाम से आज पहचान मिली जो विश्व के बौद्धिक जगत में एक महत्वपूर्ण स्थान रखता है इसी अद्भुत विशाल संग्रह से मैनुस्क्रिप्ट को चयन करके ग्यारह खंडों में श्रीमद भगवत गीता का को तैयार किया गया जिसका लोकार्पण महाराजा साहब के इक्यानवे जन्मदिन पर दो में परम आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी ने उसका लोकार्पण किया था बानवे जन्मदिन पर 2022 में तीन वॉल्यूम्स में कैटलॉग को प्रकाशित किया गया जिसकी शुरुआत सर ऑलियन स्टाइन ने अठारह में किया था उसके बाद उन्नीस में बहत्तर में और चौरासी में डेकन कॉलेज पूना से पाठकर जी ने उसको संग्रह किया था और यह मेरा सौभाग्य है कि इस कार्य के दायित्व को पूरा करने का मुझे 2003 में मुझे अवसर प्राप्त हुआ और अब 2023 आज के दिन तिरानवे में जन्मदिन पर मुंडक उपनिषद का विमोचन मुंडक उपनिषद का विमोचन माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति जी आपके कर कमलों से संपन्न हो रहा है मुंडक हम सब के लिए यह परम सौभाग्य की बात है मुंडक का अर्थ मुंडन या मस्तिष्क को अत्यधिक शक्ति प्रदान करने वाला है इस पर विशेष प्रकाश माननीय डॉक्टर साहब से हम सभी थोड़ी देर में लाभान्वित होंगे इस महत्व पर इसका महत्व इस तत्व से प्रकाशित होता है कि हमारे भारतवर्ष का राष्ट्रीय आदर्श वाक्य इसी मुंडक उपनिषद के सर्व ज्ञात मंत्र से है सत्य में जयते नानृतम सत्यन पंथा वितो देवयान यहां छह पांडुलिपियों को संग्रहित किया गया है आदि शंकराचार्य के भाष्य कमेंट्री भाष्य टीपन सेपरेट और नारायण पंडित की दीपिका को हमने यहां पर संग्रह किया है अंग्रेजी ट्रांसलेशन और कमेंट्री अपने आप में एक चुनौतीपूर्ण कार्य है 
साधारणतया इंग्लिश में शास्त्रीय भाष्य लिखने की परंपरा कम ही देखने को मिलती है लेकिन ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर साहब की रुचि ने इस चुनौतीपूर्ण कार्य को हृदय से स्वीकार किया और अंततः इसे अद्भुत रूप में प्रस्तुत कर दिया भारत की ज्ञान परंपरा दाइएस्ट थॉट ऑफ आवर कंट्री सिविलाइजेशन एंड इंडियन इंटेलेक्चुअल ट्रेडिशन इज बींग ब्रॉट आउट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पब्लिकेशन विद दॉट प्रोवोकिंग भाष्य कमेंट्री बाय ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर साहब उनकी साधना उनका चिंतन उनका अभिदान का यह परिचायक है यहां पर मैं थोड़ा सा एक पासिंग रेफरेंस दे रहा हूं मैसूर के रॉयल पुस्तकालय के क्यूरेटर डॉक्टर शाम शास्त्री 1904 में अचानक उन्हें जब वो मैनुस्क्रिप्ट को देखते थे तो एक पांडुलिपि मिली और उस पर उन्होंने 1904 में लिखा 1909 में लिखा और 15 में लिखा तब पता चला पूरे संसार को कि कौटिल्य नाम की कोई चीज है पहली बार कौटिल्य के अर्थशास्त्र को 100 साल पहले शाम शास्त्री जी ने लाया था इसी तरह मुझे लगता है कि श्री रणबीर संस्कृत रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट के विशाल संग्राम में न जाने कितने अनमोल रत्न हैं जो पूरे विश्व की बौद्धिकता को नई ऊर्जा और पहचान देने का सामर्थ्य रखते हैं भारत माँ की श्रेष्ठता की सिद्धि में इनकी महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका हो सकती है यह हमारे देश का सौभाग्य है कि जम्मू कश्मीर के डोगरा राजवंश में महाराजा साहब के नेतृत्व में इन दुर्लभ अमूल्य पांडुलिपियों को संग्रहित संरक्षित और संवर्धित किया है जबकि यह मेरा परम सौभाग्य है कि गुरुदेव डॉक्टर साहब डॉक्टर कर्ण सिंह जी का आशीर्वाद और उनके समस्त परिजनों का विशेष स्नेह मिला है जिसके परिणाम स्वरूप पांडुलिपि विद्या के अनमोल रत्नों को विश्व के समक्ष प्रस्तुत करने में हम सक्षम हो पाए हैं डॉक्टर साहब के तिरानवे जन्मदिन पर आदरणीय उपराष्ट्रपति जी आपका जो अनुग्रह हम लोगों को मिल रहा है वो हमारे मार्ग को प्रशस्त और सशक्त करेगा अंत में 120 वर्षों से संस्कृत प्राच्य विद्या के प्रसिद्ध प्रकाशक मोतीलाल बनारसी दास के श्री राजेंद्र प्रकाश जैन और वरुण जैन ने पूरे मनोयोग से इसका प्रकाशन किया है अंत में आप सब दिव्य जनों के अंत स्थल में स्थित जगत जननी जानकी जी और श्री रघुनाथ जी को बारंबार प्रणाम करते हुए डॉक्टर साहब की उद्बोधन उद्बोधन का हम सब श्रवण करेंगे नमस्कार धन्यवाद डॉक्टर करण सिंह नीड्स नो इंट्रोडक्शन However, it is my honor and privilege to introduce her with a few brief words. Dr. Karan Singh is truly a multifaceted personality. He is a statesman, author, educationist, and environmentalist. He has been a member of both houses of parliament during his long, distinguished public life, and has held several key portfolios as a cabinet minister in the government of India. He has travelled widely and has written several books, exploring. He has traveled widely and has written several books exploring diverse themes and subjects. He was elected to the Rajya Sabha in the year 2000 and has served as the chairman of its ethics committee. Dr. Karan Singh has been associated with the Jammu and Kashmir University, the Jawaharlal Nehru University and the Banaras Hindu University as their chancellor. He has also been a key driving force in promoting Indian culture abroad. sir has been awarded with the padma vibhushan in public affairs in the year 2005 yes. and in the year 2011 has been conferred with the outstanding parliamentarian award instituted by the indian parliamentary group sir i now request you to address the audience om bhadram karne bhi shivayam deva भद्रम पश्येक्षुवाद्रोवृदशवाहस्वस्तिनोस्पतिर्दा
ओम शांति श्री जगदीप धनकर सेक्रेटरी एंड फैमिली एंड फ्रेंड्स गैदर्ड इन दिस वेरी हिस्टोरिक रेजिडेंस आई रिमेंबर कमिंग हेयर वे बैक वेन डॉक्टर राधा कृष्णन वॉज वाइस प्रेजिडेंट दैट वुड बी बैक इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी वेन राजन बाबू के प्रेजिडेंट एंड ही वाइस प्रेजिडेंट एंड सो मेनी टाइम्स आफ्टर दैट डॉक्टर जाकिर हुसैन एंड अदर्स great scholars been there and now my good friend jagdeep dhankar has been kind enough when the suggestion came that this uh, book be released he said hamare ghar mein karna hai aap uh, thank you very much sir for your hospitality i think he deserves a round a round of applause we live friends in an age of great turmoil and transition when the old is collapsing and the new is struggling to be born and we are caught between a disappearing past and an uncertain future at a time like this we go back to our shastras to our classics not in order to go backwards in time you can never go backwards in time whatever golden age they may or may not have been that is past chalai niti chalai niti veda says us to move forwards but to see what inspiration we can get from these texts which gives us the strength the intelligence uh, and 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 the confidence to move boldly into the future and india has a huge array of sacred texts lankar ji i don't think any religion in the world has the sheer corpus of texts in sanskrit that we have uh, there are the vedas of course i started with the vedic verse then there are the ब्राह्मणास विच आर कर्म कांड एंड देर आर अन्य कर एंड देन देर आर उपनिषद दी उपनिषद टू माय माइंड आर द हाई वाटर मार्क नॉट ओनली ऑफ इंडिया बट ऑफ वर्ल्ड फिलोसफी देर आर सीरीज ऑफ डायलॉग्स प्लीज रिकॉल दैट द इंडिक रिलीजन आर डायलॉगिक रिलीजन क्वेश्चन आंसर दैट इज वाई वी वी हैव दिस ट्रेडिशन यू सी दी एब्राहमिक रिलीजन आर रिवील रिलीजन देर आर टेक्सट is revealed there it is you can't ask any questions but here our for example this very mundaka upanishad has a great question shonaka a great householder goes and asks you know what he asks lankari kasmin no bhago vigyate sarva vedam vigyate bhavati what is that by knowing which everything becomes known what a tremendous question i mean to ask a question like that itself is a, is an act of genius and then the guru replies hi with that i'm not going into that in detail but i'm making the point that the upanishads are dialogue are dialogues so is the gita later much later than the upanishads is a dialogue and these dialogues are spread over perhaps a thousand years if you fly from here to calcutta as you must have done on many occasions and <laughs> get you will see the great himalayas if you look upon the vedas as the himalayas himalaya ka what is kalidas described in in kumara sambhav opening verse astutrasyam dishi devata atma himalayo naam nagaviraj purva paro to yanidhi bhagaya sidha prithibya gamana it is like the measuring rod to gauge the greatness of the world if you when you fly you see there many mountain peaks right from from if you start right from the beginning then there is the shore until you get to kanchenjunga now the upanishads are like those mountain peaks based on the vedas growing up from the vedas but those dialogues between gurus and shishyas sitting on the banks of a lake or in the forest hermitage they ask questions sharp questions why are we here what is the meaning of our life who impels us to move so these questions are asked and answer in the upanishads there are large number of upanishads 11 principal upanishads there are i won't go into the great details of that because this is not a discourse on 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 the upanishads but i just want to say that this is the high water mark and if i may i want to try and place before you the, the basic concepts of the upanishads two concepts have to be grasped the first is the concept of the all pervasive brahman 
everywhere, not only the speck of dust that we call planet Earth, but the billions and billions of galaxies in the unending universe around us are all permeated by, are all illuminated by the same divine force known as the Brahman. Then the second major concept is the reflection or the spark, if you like, of that divine force in every human being, that is the Atman. So the Brahman, the all-pervasive Brahman, and the Atman within each human being, those are two basic concepts. And the whole point of our spiritual endeavor is to join these two. How do we join or rejoin the Atman with the Brahman? And what is the process of joining? Yoga. The word yoga comes from the same root as the English word yoke, to join. Yoga is to join. So the whole philosophy and technology of yoga is the joining of the two. Now, there are four main parts to join, as, as you are very well aware, Anthony. The first is the Jnana Yoga, the way of the mind, the discrimination between the real and the unreal, Sata Sat Viveka. We, we not only see what is before us, we try and see what is behind it. Plato says that we are in a cave and all we see are shadows on the wall of the cave. We neither see the objects nor the light behind them. So trying to see what is the reality behind this constantly changing cosmos, because the world changes. Samsarati iti samsara. The definitions of samsara is that which changes. But what is the reality behind it? The Jnana Yoga is the way of reflection, of reading the text and trying to clarify the mind. Jnana Yoga. The second is the Bhakti Yoga. That is the way of the heart. Unless the heart opens in love and devotion and dedication to whatever form of the divine you choose, it won't work. You can't find one engine. You need, you need the emotions also. You have to fall in love with the divine. Unless, you, unless there is love, unless your emotions are working, you are only working up in the head. It's not good enough. So the Bhakti Yoga, that is why we have such an array of gods and goddesses and people are bewildered when they ask me, how do you have so many? They are not different gods and goddesses. They are different forms of the same Brahman. I tell my Muslim friends, they ask me, Deepne Devi Devta, I some you can worship with a form, you can worship without a form. It can be a male, it can be a female, it can be Shiva, it can be Shakti, it can be Krishna. Any form that Krishna, Christ, is a very powerful form of meditation. So the Bhakti Yoga is the second yoga. The Jnana Yoga is the way of the mind, the Bhakti Yoga is the way of the heart. The Karma Yoga is the way of the arms. The Upanishads also stress, Kurvani Vidha Karmani, the second line is Karma Yoga. Because we all have to do something, we can't sit. We may have a cottage in Kashmir, but we can't sit there all the time. Because we've got to get back into Delhi. Delhi pulls you back. Once you're in Delhi, you can never leave Delhi. So, uh, the thing is that you can have a cottage, but you can't live there. So, the Karma Yoga, we've got to do something. Everybody has got to do something. Everybody in this room is either a lawyer or a journalist or a thinker or a writer or something. You've got to do something. Now, Gita gives us a very good key to Karma Yoga. Yata pravritti bhutanam yen sarva midam tatam sokarmana tamab bhyarta siddhim binditi maram. That force which permeates the entire universe by worshipping that through your work, Man leads, leads to a perfection. Not every yoga is karma yoga. Dush karma karo to do yoga yoga nahi hai. Karma is, yoga is yoga, work dedicated to the divine. And that is the mantra. Once you dedicate everything to the divine, then you know you can't do anything wrong. Because the moment you do anything wrong, you say, well, how can I dedicate this to Lord Shiva? So if I have to do anything, I go to think, how can I put this before you? So karma yoga is action, daksha, shutir daksha. It should be efficient, it should be 
uh, effective and it should be dedicated to the divine. So Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, Raj Yoga, the way of the breath. The breath is the most important thing mentally. When we are born, we breathe, start breathing, and we breathe literally until our last breath. But do we ever look at our breath? Do we ever consider our breath? Have you ever sat quietly and just watch yourself breathe? Or do we just breathe? Everybody breathes, you know, big bhadri breathing, breathing. We said, how do you breathe? Do you, do you look into yourself when you're breathing? Do you do some mudras? What do you do when you breathe? So the breath itself can become a powerful engine for, for, for uh, uh, salvation and for joining the Atman and the Brahma. There are Radha Yoga is a huge science, is the science of the Kundalini Shakti within us. I can't even begin to go into all of that. But suffice to say that within our own body there are powers, there are capacities which if we develop can take us to a higher consciousness. So these four yogas, the Jnana Yoga, the Bhakti Yoga, the Karma Yoga and the Raj Yoga, between them constitute the methodology of joining the Atman and the Brahma. That said, there are two or three points extra I want to say if I may be your uh, Ekam Sat Vipraha Bhavuda Vadanti. The truth is one, the wise call it by many names. That is why Hinduism is, is so the only religion in the world perhaps that accepts multiple paths to the divine. <clears throat> we don't say this is only the path you must go. If a Christian would come to me and say, I say, you be a good Christian, don't bother about becoming a Hindu. But use your religion to go, <coughs> go upwards. So this Ekam Sat is, is the key, a key concept of our civilization. We accept multiple, we, multiple paths to the divine. I can say my path is the best for me, but you don't follow my path, therefore I can blow you up or cut you off, cut your throat, so cut that is not acceptable. And even in this world today, there are still fanatic religious people who try and force people into their own way. This not doesn't work. It will not work in India. Hinduism is a pluralistic religion. India is a pluralistic country. Unless we accept multiple paths to the divine Dhankarji, how are we going to move? How are we going to run this society? We must never get into a, into a situation of confrontation. We did it once and we paid the price. 1947. It was the great uh, triumph of, of uh, uh, independence. What about the tragedy of partition? It was a bull there. One crore people were uprooted from their houses. Lakhs of people were killed on both sides. What about that price we paid? So we must never fall into the trap of, we must remember again always the syncretic nature of our uh, culture. You know, I'm doing, I don't know if any of you are hearing it or not, I'm doing a program for Sunset TV, RTK TV. I'm anchoring a program called Ekam Sat. It comes on Sansad, Sansad TV and we have presented all the great religions of India. People from those religions, I, I anchor them and they speak. In fact, do the little, we have many rabbi here. They say many pandit has a many rabbi here. So many rabbi Gata people didn't even know that there were Jews in India until your program. So what I'm trying to say is that we must strengthen the pluralistic nature of our society. So that is, the key is Ekam Sat The next point is Vasudeva Kutumbakam. You hear it all the time. Ayam Nija Paroveti Gananam Laguchetasam Udar Charitanam To Vasudeva Kutumbakam. This is mine, that is yours, is a small and narrow way of looking at reality. Udar Charitanam, for those of the higher consciousness, Vasudha Eva Kutumbukam. The world itself is a family. What a great concept. Thousands of years ago when you couldn't move more than 10 miles a day on foot, our seers realized that in the ultimate analysis, 
humanity has to look upon itself as a family. Otherwise, we are destroying ourselves. We tried, we tried in the League of Nations, we tried in the United Nations. Look what's happening today. There are fratricidal wars going on in the world. So we have to accept with nationalism is there certainly. But Dhankar is interesting. Rabindranath Tagore, Senior Bindu, both ultimately transcended nationalism. Even Senior Bindu, the great prophet of Indian nationalism, ultimately said nationalism will have run its course, we must have human unity. So however idealistic this may appear, this Vasudeva Kutumbakam is a great concept. I'm very glad we are using that now for the G20s. And uh, uh, I must co compliment uh, Prime Minister Modi. Also, by the way, compliment it for yoga. The Raja yoga, that, that the yoga has now been um, popularized around the world for yoga, international yoga. It's only a very small part. It's a Hatha yoga. But don't worry if you can't stand on your head. As I always used to say, <laughs> the capacity to stand on your head is not a condition precedent for illumination. Even if you can't stand on it, it doesn't matter. So, so therefore, this, uh, the Vasudeva Kutumbakam is a great concept. We've got to keep it. You know, every person loves his country. I was at the uh, Suchetgarh border the other day. My sons have been there. And I was here, and one step there, that was Pakistan. So, Hamari Bhumi Pavitra hai, to ek step se hai, Pavitra kaise ho jati? You see, if you come to think of it rationally, the whole world is supposed to be one. The Gaia concept, the world is, and because we don't treat the world as one, that is why we are facing what we are facing today. Hurricanes, earthquakes, disasters, nature, earth is hitting back. If we misbehave with the earth, Harkadi, the earth will one day hit back and is hitting back already. And the final point I want to make is Bahujana Sukhaya, Bahujana Hitaya. The welfare of the many, the happiness of the many. What better definition of, of, of communism? I was writing, speaking on my Raj Sabha last speech and my friend D. Raja was there. I said, Raja, you're a communist. Can you think of a better definition? Sarve Pisukhina Santu. Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kashchitu Bhagavit. May all beings be healthy, may all beings be happy, may no one have to undergo suffering. What greater communism can there be? So that we must not forget that. We must not forget that Bhujan Sukhaya Bhujan Hita. Even today, Ankarji, I am ashamed to say, if you like, I have seen India grow from its birth. I'm older than the Republic, by the way. So I've seen the Republic book. I'm not impressed by 75 years. But I've seen from Jawaharlal Nehru to Anand Bhai Modi, every Prime Minister has seen. Everybody has tried to remove poverty. Not yet. Crores of people, even today in India, shiver in the winter, drenched in the monsoon, sweat in the summer, because they have nowhere to live. Crores of children, Dhankaji, even today, are malnourished and do not get enough inputs so that their bodies and minds are warped. Is it not a disgrace and a shame that after 75 years and all that everybody has done, every Prime Minister has done, we have not got there. So if we have to have a goal for, 2000, for, for our centenary, it has to be the abolition of absolute poverty. I mean, it's, it's incredible how uh, people can, can live in, in those situations. So, Bahujana Sukhai, when Vivekananda founded the Ramakrishna mission, he gave them one simple mantra. Atmana Mokshartham Jagathitayaja. Work for the welfare of your soul, but also for the welfare of society. These concepts, I suggest, Dhankarji, uh, if taken together, these Vedantic concepts, which are reflected in the Munduka and other Upanishads, they give us an alternative viewpoint to the present highly Mm. Uh, uh, combative and exploitative systems, uh, an alternative uh, world view based upon f happiness, based upon love, based upon uh, non-violence and based upon peace. So that to my mind, Mr. Dhankar, uh, Vice President, 
Yeah, the message is good. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir, thank you so much for your enlightening words. May I now request Honorable Vice President Sri Jagdeep Dhankarji to release Dr. Karan Singh's book thank on the Mundaka Upanishad. I now request the Honorable Vice President of India to address the audience. Very frankly, I do not possess the credentials to perform the duty I am doing at the moment. Ever since I became a member of parliament in 1989, It was my dream come true when I came to interact physically, not virtually, with Dr. Sa at India International Center. Never ever thought in my life I will be so privileged, honored, to secure a moment ever to chase that I'll be doing what I have done a while ago. Distinguished author, Padam Vibhushan, Dr. Karan Singh, his family members, members of the trust, distinguished friends, and his admirers. Sri Kumar Gupta, Secretary to the Honorable Vice President of India. Friends, at the outset, I join you all and many more across the globe in wishing Dr. Karan Singh a very happy birthday as he enters 93rd year. Dr. Singh enters 93rd year of an eventful life marked with sublimity, simplicity, disarming modesty, and captivating elegance. Dr. Singh is a shining example of how age is just a number. For a well-disciplined, thinking and vibrant mind, with positivity ever being fulcrum of thought process. He has been infallible on this touchstone, always positive. 
emanating positive vibes. An extraordinary scholar who synergizes deep knowledge with enormous huge personal experience of decades that's more than my age. Born a prince, he relinquished the elitist image and adapted himself to a democratic order of which to our good fortune he remains a leading light. Friends at Chairman Rajasabha, I miss him. His presence both in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha was highly impactful. His presence was felt. When I had the great good fortune to dine with him at his residence, I conveyed to him, sir, I will feel your absence and that will be very painful for me. And that will justify some of the transgressions which enormously talented people here, particularly Pawanji may not easily approve. But a good lawyer is one, I claim to be one. We have a younger one here. Never misses an opportunity. I will do that, even at the cost of getting some censor. My versatility and genius, Dr. Singh, is uniquely, imminently positioned to dwell deep into the gems of Munda Kopnishad. Let's seek to enrich our mind with knowledge so that we liberate ourselves of errors and veils of ignorance. Sir, indeed an honor to formally release your book, Mundak Upanishad, The Bridge to Immortality. I highly commend the book for wider circulation, dissemination, for welfare of humanity. It's worth everyone's time. Friends, when you attend a function of such a legend, you have to engage in due diligence and homework. It may not be my ordinary subject, but then we can always imbibe by putting in some effort. The lessons we draw from Upanishads are eternal. And finding as I do in my difficult position, I can reflect with firm conviction, contemporaneously relevant as never before. I see the relevance more as I sit in a chair. That certainly is not very comfortable. For the simple reason, you expect rational approach from those who drive their actions by rationality, you end up finding they are not their usual self when they are in their theater. Opnishas take us to wholesome path of order, truth, and moral values. Mundak Opnishad is of particular significance to us from one of its part mantra we have taken, Satya Mevjati. The motto is written below the Ashoka emblem, which is our state emblem. Friends, it is my constitutional duty and honor to sit below the hallowed emblem as Vice President and Chairman of Rajya Sabha and be in the service of the nation. Without fear of cont contradiction and with deep conviction, I assert, Dr. Singh, during his long, illustrious parliamentary career, exemplified 
constitutional virtuosity that calls for regulation and emulation. I commend every parliamentarian to reflect on the best parliamentarian of a particular year to work in favor of the nation, ignoring parties and stance. Dr. Singh reflects the essence of our founding fathers of the Constitution. They evolved Constitution through dialogue, debate, discussion, and deliberation. Sir, you are aware, more than anyone else, Constituent Assembly members traversed highly contentious issues, divisive issues, including of language. And all they did without there being a single disturbance, single disruption. No one came to the well. And they gave us this great document, the Constitution. I had spoken of transgressions. It is justifiable. I am before a man who more than my age has set high example of public life behavior. Contemporary scenario in the campus of democracy today is worrisome. Disruption and no decorum is order of the day. I call upon people in particular intelligentsia, media and youth to generate mass awareness to contain this riding of our parliamentary system. Time for such moment has come so that we proudly, with pride, we become members of the largest democracy, mother of democracy on earth. It is for us to ensure that the world looks up to our parliament as most disciplined, articulate, and strongest legislative form of debate. Undoubtedly, and no doubt, our people are concerned and anguished with projection of disruptors of proceedings, shouters of slogans, practitioners of India cross conduct, throwing of papers and whatnot. Can we sanctify it? Can we approve of it? Can we continue to observe silence at such kind of sliding of our democracy before our own eyes? I am before a man who has indicated order and truth be intrepid. We cannot afford to do that. Our parliamentarians need to exemplify conduct which can motivate, inspire, energize our people and young minds and give direction to the country. Friends, Bharat is in Amritkar. The gentleman, the author, Padam Vibhushan Awadi, respected in the country and outside, known for his massive contributions in all fields as a statesman, as diplomat, as parliamentarian, as politician, as someone in command for executive actions in the governments of several prime ministers. It is his presence that makes me courageous enough to indicate we are the most functional democracy on the planet as of date. Bharat in Amritkar is setting global discourse on many issues. All Indians are related that the country is on the rise as never before. And its upward growth trajectory is unstoppable. We are certainly on our way to 2047. Young minds who are before us, some of us may not be around at that time. But the warriors of 2047, who are in their 20s and 30s, 
must not get despair from us. They must get positive directional approach from us. How ironical, how painful, how excruciating pain people like him can feel. The world is applauding our historic accomplishments and functional, vibrant democracy. Some amongst us, including parliamentarians, in overdrive, are engaged in thoughtless, unfair denigration of our well-nurtured democratic values. How do we justify such wanton orchestration of factually untenable narrative? And mark the timing. This is an unwholesome misadventure. India is having a moment of glory, being president of G20. And there are people outside from the country working in overdrive to denigrate us. Such misplaced campaign mode to taint and tarnish our parliament and constitution entities is too serious and exceptional, exceptional to be ignored and countenanced. Friends, no political strategy or partisan stance can justify compromising our nationalism and democratic values. I am before a noble soul. My silence on this misadventure. If I observe silence on this orchestration by a member parliament outside the country, which is ill-premised, and also motivated, I will be on the wrong side of constitution. It will be constitutional culpability and outrage of my oath. How can I sanctify a statement that mics in Indian parliament are put off? How dare anyone pick up courage to say so? Has there, has there been ever illustration? Yes, we did have a dark chapter of our political history. Proclamation of emergency. The darkest period which any democracy can suffer. The Indian democratic polity has now matured. There can be no repeat of that. Anyone who says so inside the country or outside that in the Indian parliament mics are put off is an affront to the nation. Imagine this being done after having held the floor for nearly 50 minutes. Such kind of wanton misadventure to run down our democratic fabric and values cannot be countenanced. I call upon everyone, intelligentsia, media, and youth who are warriors of 2047, rise to the occasion, expose these forces, neutralize them. I am not a stakeholder in politics. I don't engage in partisan stance, but I do believe in constitutional duty and I know fear cannot dominate my mind after I have kept Dr. Singh on my right side for so long. If I observe silence, the vast majority of people who believe in this nation would be silenced forever. We cannot allow such kind of narrative to gain currency and momentum by those elements who wish to antidote our rising growth. Tell me, friends, what can be more distance from truth than this? I preside Rajya Sabha. Let someone come forward and say, my was put off. There is a fullest freedom of expression as per constitution. And no democracy in the world can rival that. 
blossoming democracy at all layers? Which country can claim to have a multi-layer democracy at panchayat level, municipal level, state level, and central level? And different, diversified. You run down our judiciary on a foreign soil. Where on the planet your judiciary that acts with lightning speed? For one number of instances, there may be issues which we have ironed out. But our judiciary is made with the most brilliant minds in the world. We have achieved justice with that kind of exposure. In democracy, there will always be issues in doctrine of separation of powers to be settled, resolved. But we, who are at the apex level of these institutions, cannot be complainants. We cannot hold out agreements. We have to find resolution. And that is why the kind of mental thinking that has been given, that your aim has to be what? To secure welfare of all. Friends, I said I'll be engaging in a brief translation. I want media to be fair. I will scale it down. Please don't be fair, but don't be unfair. I will go still a step down. Don't be so unfair that you set afloat untruths to run down a constitutional authority. Sir, you know the importance of committees. You have been part of money, both as a minister and otherwise. Every committee is serviced by his staff. There will be five, six people. I got input from a number of chairmen and members. Then Mr. Chairman, do something affirmatively so that we improve our productivity. So what I do, the human resource attached to the committee, I sharpen it. I put in research-oriented people. I put knowledgeable people so that they can help the committee members optimize their output, their performance. In the process, I appointed some. An IS officer, an Indian Foreign Service officer, a man who has credentials of LLM, and a narrative is set afloat. First by a newspaper, then by channels. Bajar, chairman has appointed his own members to the committee. Now, would anyone, for heaven's sake, check up? Committee is of members of parliament. It is their exclusive domain. I am terribly upset and concerned. What our editors are doing? I have directed my office to get in touch with the editors of newspapers. To channel heads. Can you engage into such kind of narrative which is based on falsehood? And you don't care, you want to check up? Here is a man who is acting because chairman and members of the committee have come to me. They have indicated to me, I run out these things. I am doing it after multi-layered deliberative sessions. And suddenly every channel, a democrat, sir, is so to be made out of this court. You have given me the courage to speak out my minds. I will not take more on this. Sir, I have friends. Ponji is one of them. I was really elected when uh, in a literary function I had the occasion to participate and he gave his discourse. It was a moment of great uh, pride for me when Dr. Saab in a virtual mode was there to give the discourse and the entire cultural city of Kolkata was in high attention and every word which he spoke was impactful. But sir, where is the genius 
that doesn't come to my rescue. Where are those giants in the profession, journalism, in public life, who don't speak out? I need your support. I am sure this will come. Sir, I wouldn't digress any further and come to the point. We all must give standing ovation to Dr. Singh. selfish man. We need Dr. Singh for many years to come. We need Dr. Singh to be in good health and happiness because he is one of the very few who can energize, inspire and motivate by his thought process. I have no doubt that Dr. Singh will continue to bless me. He has been here while every vice president has been. I should be vacating this house in few months. I had sought a promise from him at his residence that when I enter those premises, the new Prashtapati Nivas, he will be there to bless me and I know a man at his level is not required to articulate by words, but all that I have said before you, indicating my serious concerns, I can tell you. I am his Eklavi. I do it with his constructive sanction. I am grateful to the organizers for affording us this very great opportunity in the honor of a great man whose discourses and writings are well read. Sir, lastly, when I was governor of the state of West Bengal, I used to say one thing jokingly. That in Kohan Pariga Kuropati, there are four lifelines. One can phone a friend, one can speak to two. As governor of West Bengal, I have no lifeline. Sir, as Governor of West Bengal, I could have had some lifeline. As Chairman Rajya Sabha, I have none. I, therefore, am fully aware of what Sansar TV is doing in respect to you. And only this afternoon, we had a session how to put it at a much higher pedestal. And my top three officials including the secretary to the presi vice president, senior vice president, we deliberated that we have to be different, emanate a thought process of people possessed of sublimity, knowledge, and about whom all, only you can say one thing. We are ever in salutation of you. Thank you. Trustee J.K. Dharmarth Trust to present the vote of thanks. Pranam Namaskar or Kaskar Kamagani to Ankar Ji. I have been in the Dharam Sankar because I have been in Hindi speech and I have been in the Dharam Sankar. I will try to do it. His, ex His Excellency Honorable Sri Jagdeep Dhankar Ji, Unke Saath Birajman, <coughs> Adar Yog, Mahaja Dr. Karan Singh Ji, <coughs> Unke Saath Birajman, Sri Sunil Gupta Ji, Main Khaas Karke uh, Dr. Kamal Mishra Ji Ko uh, Dhaniyawad Dena Chahta Hoon, Jho Itni Kathnai, Itna Samay Laga Ke Inho Ne Ek किताब तो नहीं कहूँगा पर एक विरासत हमें दी गई है जो कि अगले जैसे धनकर जी ने कहा कि अगली जो जनरेशन है उनके लिए एक ये विरासत है शी आर पी जैन वरुण जैन जी 
जिन्होंने बड़ा कष्ट करके ये काम किया मैं आभार प्रकट करता हूँ एंड आई एम ग्रेटफुल एंड इंडेटेड टू हिज एक्सेंसी फॉर गिविंग अस दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू सेलिब्रेट महाराज साहब बर्थडे एंड दी बुक टुडे मैं समस्त परिवार धर्म ट्रस्ट के जो लोग हैं आपका भी आभार प्रकट करता हूँ और खास करके जितने भी यहाँ पे हमारे मित्र और परिवारजन आए हैं कि इन्होंने समय निकाल के इस फंक्शन की शोभा बढ़ाई मैं आभार प्रकट करता हूँ आई एम एक्सट्रीमली ग्रेटफुल टू हिज एक्सलेंसी वाइस प्रेजिडेंट स्टाफ एंड टू द इंटायर मीडिया एंड आई डू होप सिंस आई हैव बीन ऑल्सो इन पॉलिटिक्स सर वन टर्म मिनिस्टर थ्री टर्म्स एम एल सी सो आई रियलाइज द पेन दैट यू गोइंग थ्रू राइट नाउ बचपन में आज uh, uh, माता जी नहीं है उनका स्वर्गवास हो गया पर uh, हमेशा मुझे कहते थे कि uh, बापू जी पूजा कर रहे हैं तो जहाँ जाके बैठिए और दोनों मेरे भाई दादा और मैं uh, पूजा में बैठते थे uh, मुझे इसमें कोई शंका नहीं है कि मेरे डीएनए में कोई प्रॉब्लम है क्योंकि अभी गाड़ी में जब मैं बैठा तो मैंने स्पीच लिखी तो उसमें मैंने खाली दो श्लोक लिखे और श्लोक मैंने संस्कृत नहीं पढ़ा क्योंकि मैं अंग्रेजी स्कूल में पढ़ा हूँ तो अंग्रेज अंग्रेजी स्कूल में संस्कृत नहीं पढ़ाई जाती पर मैं कोशिश करूँगा कि जैसे महाराजा साहब ने बोला और मिश्रा जी बोलते हैं भद्रम करने वही श्रीनु याम देवा भद्रम पश्चेमा शिविर या चित्रा स्थिर रंग शुगा गुम व्यमे देव यदा यहो सृष्टि न इंद्रो वृद्धशवाह सृष्टि न पूखा विश्व वेदा सृष्टि न रक्षो अरिष्ट ने भी स्वस्ति न वृद्धस्पृत धातु ये कभी अगर आप नहीं पढ़ते हैं तो कान से सुन के कुछ याद आ जाता है और अंतवत आपसे मैं जो फिर महाराज साहब ने एक और श्लोक बोला वो भी मैंने गाड़ी में लिखा सर्वे भवंतु सुखिना सर्वे संतु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणी पश्यंती माँ कष्ट दुख भाप है सब सुख रहें सब रोग मुक्त रहें सबके जीवन में मंगल में हो मेरी यही ईश्वर से प्रार्थना है आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जय हिंद जय भारत request all present to please